Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Equinox Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the coordination group of the 2025 initiative. And as always, before we begin our work, we start with the alignment. So let's bring our focus within. Using the power of creative imagination, we see ourselves joining to the circle of the group, gathered on the top of the mountain plateau. And we link with each other with light and love and will to good. And we visualize the group heart center as the radiant sun connecting all our hearts together, blending and synthesizing it in the center of the group love. And we increase the radiance of the group heart, projecting the light of group love upwards, linking with the radiant heart of the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the Christ. And we open our group consciousness to energies of Libra.
and we, as we align with the energies of the full moon linked with the hierarchy, we come to the point of balance, the point of equinox. And we align with the cycle of our planet in its journey around the sun. And as we stand in the point of equilibrium, we sound the mantra. I'm a point of light within a greater light. I'm a strength of loving energy within the stream of love divine. I am a point of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God. And thus I stand. I am a way by which men may achieve. I am a source of strength, enabling them to stand. I am a beam of light shining upon their way. And thus I stand. And standing thus revolve and tread this way the ways of men and know the ways of God and thus I stand. Welcome to the Equinox Festival webinar. This webinar continues the work following the cycles of equinoxes and solstices. And as we come together four times a year following this cycle, we align ourselves with the cycles of our planet and the highest cycles in our collective journey within our solar system and within the largest systems that our beautiful planet revolves and uh, today nicholas neelan our dear guest and our presenter who will share with us his understanding of the significance of the cycles of this beautiful journey, but also will bring our focus to the topic of the 10 seed groups. As you know, throughout this year, uh, the 2025 initiative works with the framework of the 10 seed groups. And Nichols, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And 
sharing this celestial perspective to the fancy groups. Hi, Nicholas. Thank you, Alex. Hi, Alexander. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's been so, a while since you've been uh, with us on this platform. So thank you very much for accepting our invitation. And we are really pleased and honored. So the floor is yours. And I will make you a presenter that you could share your screen. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you for extending an invitation. And let's see if we can. So now you should be able to show your screen. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I should be able to select uh, select the screen, right? Mm -hmm. so. yeah, and while we have um, waiting to see your screen, I wanted to uh, check if uh, the sound is good for our audience, because we got one note from Regina that she can't hear. From my side, all is good. Maybe we... No, sound is good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like it's good for other people. Okay. Um, so, Nicholas, can you, can you see the function to share your screen? Yeah. I just there. It's a little bit delay here. So whenever you're ready, now it's getting there. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's. Let's see. That's. Yes, uh, we can see your screen now. Okay. Very good. So let's see, um, today um, we're going to look at um, the 10 seed groups. And uh, my intent is to try to relate these 10 seed groups and their work with um, certain constellations in the heavens so as to give them a safe anchoring on the higher planes, if you will, or in the inner planes of the symbolic worlds. And uh, also, I thought we could just have a look at some of the astrology for the current moment to begin with. So here is a chart for uh, approximately this moment. You may see the symbol of the sun which is uh, zero degrees, 39 minutes into the sign Libra. And it's down in the right corner. Hopefully everyone knows the symbol of the sun now. It's a very occult symbol with a dot at the center of a circle. And we can also see that that sun is in a very close opposition to the planet Chiron. Of course, Chiron is not a planet. It's a centaur uh, body within the solar system. Uh, but to an astrologer, uh, it kind of works like a planet and has a very potent influence in the horoscopes of people who are into the uh, spiritual dimensions. It is um, Chiron, the wise centaur, who is also a great healer, who 
himself experiences pain and goes through the learnings of that in order to become aware of certain things in his own nature and the relations between those factors in himself so he can adjust those and thus bring about healing within his own nature as well as within the nature of those he is seeking to aid and assist and guide. We can also notice here that uh, the moon is in the sign Pisces and it is conjunct the planet Neptune. Neptune is as well a great healing influence. It's a synthesizing ruling planet on the second ray of love and wisdom within our solar system. And in addition to that, acts as a sacred planet on the sixth ray of idealism and devotion as well. It is very strongly placed in the sign of Pisces, which it rules as a modern ruler. So from only those two influences, we can see that there's a strong healing, holistic approach in the air at the moment. And at least in this location where I am, there is Taurus rising in the east, which hopefully will uh, bring some light and illumination on what we are going to speak about. As you can see, Venus is in the opposite sign of Scorpio at this moment in time. So we will try to bring light into the darkness, into areas somewhat obscure and hidden to many. Uh, so that will be part of our challenge uh, together this time. When it comes to the sign Taurus, we have been told by the Tibetan that the esoteric ruling planet is none other than the planet Vulcan, which is first ray planet, a sacred planet at that within our solar system, which planet uh, is an intramercurial planet. In other words, it revolves around the sun inside the orbit of Mercury. Mercury has an orbit of about 88 days. Thus Vulcan will have, will have an orbit around the Sun which is uh, less than that. There are certain theories and hypotheses around the planet Vulcan and um, have lately had some focus and attention on the planet Vulcan uh, even before the uh, planet Vulcan showed up in the news very lately um, because of the discovery of a planet around the star Eridanus 40, which is a star that Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek, himself uh, said was uh, connected to um, to Vulcan and the discovery of the planet. So Vulcan has been in the air and we haven't discovered Vulcan within our own solar system yet, it seems. Um, the reasons for that may be many. It may be quite uh, difficult to see it uh, against the background of the sun, particularly. It may be itself a fairly etheric, ethereal sphere, which makes it uh, more difficult to observe. But I would guess that there is some physicality to it as well. So 
At one point, I would say that it will be possible to discover it also by scientific um, observational means. Before we can do that, we have astrology and we have our intuition and we have our methods in astrology to use in order to try to divine and find out where it is. Um, my suggestion to you as to its position right now would be that it is actually ahead of the sun. So the sun is right now in the first degree of Libra. And I would suggest that it is ahead of the sun and fairly close to its uh, greatest elongation from the sun. In other words, uh, the position where it is at its great, greatest distance from the sun as seen from our vantage point on the earth. depending on how far it is from the sun, will be its period around the sun. It has been suggested that it may range from 18 days to up to 30 days. And um, the current hypothesis that I'm working with now is that it's actually quite analogous to uh, the lunar cycle that we experience here on Earth with respect to the moon. In other words, 27 to 28 days. If that was also the cycle of Vulcan around the sun, then Vulcan would have approximately a greatest elongation from the sun about 10 degrees, a little bit more and thus suggestively Vulcan is close to that. In other words, it is uh, about 10 degrees of Libra suggestively. Now if that was the case, as seen from the vantage point of the Earth, if we were to transpose ourselves into the center of the solar system, approximately where the sun is found, and then look out upon the planets and the positions of those planets with respect to the constellations, and the signs, then Vulcan would fall in the beginning of Aquarius. Um, heliocentrically speaking. In other words, it would be basically conjunct Mars and the south node there in Aquarius, as you can see in the horoscope. So, until we have observed Vulcan for real, um, our methods of observation astrologically is what we have so I've given you a seed here as to uh, something that, uh, at least to me, seems um, promising. Um, so it's something that you also can experiment with if you feel like that. Anyway, with Vulcan as an esoteric ruler of Taurus here, and Vulcan being in Libra, we are brought into the energies of Libra through the rising sign, esoterically speaking. And um, Taurus and Libra together, of course, is a good combination in order to try to um, bring light upon matters, to, to see things clearly. And um, like in Libra, Vulcan, as a ruler of Taurus rising here, can assist us to give us that glimpse of the path um, which we are then supposed to move forward upon 
and Vulcan can also give us that little push, that little first initial movement out of an inert position that will move us in a certain direction. In Libra, of course, the scales are ever uh, present. And um, the question is, which scale will be tilted? Which way will you go? Or when appropriate, are you able to walk the razor edge path in between the two great lines of force? Okay, so this is uh, the current picture, astrologically speaking. And uh, Libra, the balance of scales, is the sign in which the seasons are balanced and the hours of night and day, the so-called opposite poles, match each other. So we are now at that point when day and night are uh, of equal length. But of course, for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are moving towards, and, and the scales are tilting towards um, the hours of night becoming longer than the hours of day. And the opposite is true for the Southern Hemisphere, of course. Now, the sign of Libra is a sign of reorientation thus. And in astrology, the notion of reorientation and the reversal of the wheel is a very important uh, term. If you look at only the one wheel of 12 signs, then when you begin the journey in Aries, the opposite sign to Libra, and when you then reach Libra, the opposite sign to Aries, you have reached the point where reorientation is necessary. In other words, you can't move outward anymore. You can't go further in that respect. You need to begin to move back home again, if you will. So if we think of ourselves as spirits or souls, then in the sign Libra, we will reach that point where it is necessary eventually to begin to think about where did I come from? And how far I am away from that place? and thus begin within ourselves to seek a way to move towards that center within ourselves again, to return to the source, so to speak. When we look at the wheel in terms of a dual movement, like you can see in, on this picture, you have, first of all, the wheel of form, which moves through Pisces and all the signs until it comes back to the sign Aries. Now, that is the wheel of form. And that's the outgoing, if you will. Having arrived in the position of Aries, then, there will come a time when you do not enter again the sign Pisces and move in that direction on the wheel of form, but will actually station yourself and begin to move according to the wheel of consciousness. And thus through the signs of Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. And that reorientation, that station, is under the rulership of Libra and Aries together, both of them. They govern that experience in the life of man.
So if we expand that notion of the movement of the wheel and look at the chart here, we can see that there is in Aries an angle and opposite to that there is an angle in Libra and at right angles to that we have one angle in Capricorn and another in Cancer. Now this is um, the four arms in this case of the cardinal cross emphasized and uh, this cross these four arms are related to what in astrology are known as the ascendant the uh, IC or the lowest heaven the descendant the midheaven or the MC in Capricorn now that cross is in itself the cross of earth when geocentrically uh, viewed so the symbol of the earth is a circle with a cross inside it and that symbol can be seen engraved in all horoscopes as well and including the one you have in front of you here so when we look at the geocentric horoscope we we say that uh, okay the earth is at the center yes the earth is at the center and, and that's our vantage point on looking out at the other planets in the solar system but it is also by extension the four arms of the horizon and the meridian uh, that you can see here in purple color they are the contact points the manifesting points for the energies of the higher spheres and the higher worlds as they need to manifest on the earth and in our lives and through our body now that cross in itself is a movable cross with respect to the constellations in the heavens and if i can bring perhaps a different picture here to you Okay, let's see. I'm trying to show you another picture here, somewhat unsuccessfully. Um, let's see if we can do that. Uh -huh. We, we can't see your screen at the moment because you okay let's see it there says it paused so i need to can you see something now not yet okay it might be coming with a little bit delay but no we don't 
there is a function sh uh, show your screen. Reza says, uh, Mercury Saturn calls us to be patient. So we're patient. Good. <laughs> yes, now we can see your screen, yes. Uh, and, and it's the, uh, which screen is it? Is it the uh, constellation? Uh, we actually, we see two screens of you, uh, yours. One is with the presentation with multiple slides and one with constellations. You need to choose which one you want to show us. Now it disappeared. I believe there is a function that you can um, choose which of the screens you want to show. I was trying to do that. It's pausing the screen. So whatever you was doing before was successful. We could see your screen, both of your screens. Then in the point of balance, you had to choose which one to share further. Uh, I'm pushing that one. Is there another one? No. Oh. Okay, let's see, let's see. The patients. Hmm. It's chosen here and I'm trying to show it. Now probably you should need to press show the screen when you, after you chose which one? Well that's what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, the the, uh, the play triangle, so to speak. I'm, I'm pushing that. I mean, chosen. Um, okay. Uh, can we go back to the other one, maybe? Let's see. Libra. Yes, we can see now a uh, slide with the wheels. Okay, I, I can show that one, but I'm not able to show the other one for some reason. Let's see. What if I... If I just brought that one down? What do you see now? It's uh, still in the slides, the PowerPoints, right? It might be some delay, but nothing's changing. Now this is, you stopped sharing the screen. Okay, so I'll try to share again. Now we see two screens. Okay. Yeah. Yes, now we can see the, the sky. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to work for it these days uh, with all the light pollution and stuff. Um, no easy thing. Even Terastra you know. Adastra, through challenges to the stars. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Are you still with the, the stars then? Yes. Okay. So uh, we were talking about the cross, the moving cross. And that cross is um, here to be seen as the crossing point between uh, the four green lines and the four red lines at the center of the picture. 
that's uh, where the celestial meridian comes together with uh, the ecliptic, uh, basically. And um, that crossing point is actually uh, the beginning of the sign, sign Libra that you saw on the wheel before here. So the beginning point of the sign Libra is at this moment in time and space in the constellation of Virgo, as you can see here. And the little yellow dot has just passed that. So we have now passed that uh, uh, equinoctial point related to Libra, which is the autumn equinox. So we are therefore on our way back home again, if you will. It's a long journey, but that's uh, the aim here. This also gives you a good picture of the interaction of the signs of the zodiac and the constellations of the heavens. At the moment, there is a difference between the two, such that if you were to make a sidereal uh, horoscope, uh, Virgo would be the constellation in which the sign was found, uh, the sun was found. Those are two perspectives that both need to be honored. Just like we have two eyes having slightly different functions, so these two approaches and perspectives upon the positions of the planets need to be taken into consideration. And sometimes, let's say, when there's a great discrepancy between the two patterns and the energies of the two patterns, it makes for perhaps a, a, a life of greater struggle to achieve integration and fusion. So both those perspectives need to be taken into consideration in esoteric astrology, the astrology of the soul. Now, this equinoctial point, it slides backwards with respect to the constellations here. And it slides backwards by one degree every 72 years, such that it has moved 30 degrees in a period of approximately 2,160 years. And when it has thus moved um, 12 uh, times 30, in other, words, in other words, 360 degrees, it has uh, indicated a cycle, a great year of 25,920 years approximately. And that is then a cycle which is related to the soul. We could say that that cycle of, let's say, approximately 25,000 years is to the soul what 12 months is to the personality. So think about that in terms of your own life, how you may plan ahead one year. The way that you do that for one year is how the soul views a period of 25,000 years. That's an analogy suggested by the Tibetan. That gives us the scope of the soul vision and understanding of cycles, which is worthy of pondering upon, meditating upon. So this cross now has two of its um, points in Virgo constellation and Pisces constellation, moving towards Leo and Aquarius respectively. And thus we are moving 
because the vernal point is in Pisces and moving towards Aquarius. We are moving towards the Aquarian age, as we call it, an age of 2,160 years, but also an age on the greater wheel where Aquarius governs a whole cycle of 25,000 years, where we have just spent a whole cycle of 25,000 years under the influence of Pisces. So in a dual manner, we've been under the influence of Pisces for 25,000 years, and lately also within uh, the 2,160 uh, 2, year cycle. So we're moving into Aquarius to spend 25,000 years there on the greater cycle, as well as in the beginning, uh, 2160 years as well. So it's a great change uh, of guards, if you will, here. And um, if you move towards the other side of this, the heavens, we can observe the location here. I believe there may be a delay in your view. So here you can see the crossing between the red lines and the green lines being the vernal point and it's moving towards Aquarius on the right of the picture here where the moon happens to be in the flow of the life-giving waters pouring forth from the urn of the water bearer and that's also where Neptune is found now which is a very interesting position sidereally for the two in addition to their position in the sign Pisces that we saw in the horoscope before. Those are two um, different ways of looking at Moon and Neptune that can be reconciled. So the point of the cross is moving towards Aquarius and you can see that it hasn't even passed through uh, one of the fishes here. Now that fish uh, is also known as uh, the circlet. It's a circle. It's also uh, a symbol which you can relate to uh, zero, the digit zero or O. And um, it also has the symbology of relating to an egg, an egg. And this egg is actually symbolically laid by the great bird found above. And that is the great bird of Cygnus, the swan, which you should now be able to see above it on the screen here. So there's a connection between the constellation of Cygnus and the egg found here, which is uh, in one of the fishes. Now that egg is in itself like a seed, a seeding carrying the patterning and the energies of the new age to be. So although that uh, egg is connected to one of the fishes of Pisces, that fish in itself is also related to Cygnus, which in itself is connected to Aquarius. And thus that particular fish carries the energies and the patterns of the new age. So when we come to these last signs of the zodiac of Capricorn, of Aquarius, of Pisces, we are entering into that field of unitive, integrated synthesis. And you can begin to understand that as they overlap 
and infuse each other with energies. And thus you can see the fish of Pisces carrying many of the energies and the new patterns for the age to come. Now, that green line you see next to it, which is an indicator of the movement of the vernal point into the constellation of Aquarius, will enter in to that egg, into that circlet around the year 2120. And it will thus perhaps relate to that statement given by the Tibetan as to the start of the new age of Aquarius, where he gives us the year 2117. Because that is when the egg will be hatched. Now that egg contains also the seeds for the seed groups, the 10 seed groups. So in a way, emerging out of that will come these 10 seed groups into a more objective manifest role in human um, life. So we have, let's say, 100 years to, to prepare for that coming into manifestation of something more manifested, concrete side or aspect of the various groups of the 10 C groups. So we can say that we are in preparation now and we have 100 years to go before we need to see concrete manifestations um, within, uh, on, on the earth. Okay, so what I would like to uh, touch upon with respect to the 10 seed groups here is the fact that these 10 seed groups have a relation to certain constellations in the heavens. And um, I'd just like to plant those relations here with you now. I'm not going to elaborate much on that, but it, 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 it is a beginning that um, I would like to share here with you for these different uh, groups. As you know, if we go back to the sign Libra here, As you know, the first group is that of the telepathic communicators. And, and those are the people that are receptive to impression from the masters and from each other. They are custodians of group purpose. And um, they, they work largely on the mental plane and they work in and with thought matter and with the reception and direction of uh, thought currents. They are also working at the facilitation of communication between individuals so that the rules and methods whereby speech can be transcended may become known and a new way of intercourse be brought about. So it has to do with communication soul to soul on the higher levels of the mental plane and communication mind to mind on the lower levels of the mental plane. 
And this, she would say, telepathic communicative ability is very much connected to the constellations you see in front of you, where you look at the centaur constellation and its relation to lupus, the wolf, as well as the southern cross beneath the centaur. You could say that the way in which the centaur pierces the wolf or impales the wolf is indicative of the sensitivity that must be developed uh, within the brain and mind of the telepathic communicator. He is to be sensitive to such impressions as indicated here in this scene in the heavens. Let's just take that in as a possibility and thus see those constellations and that area in the sky as an area from which energies reaching the telepathic communicator workers are streaming. Next, the Tibetan mentions the group of trained observers. And we simply need to move a little bit to the left here in order to find the focal area for that group of workers. So they are the trained observers and their objective is to see clearly through all events, through space and time, by means of the cultivation and use of the intuition. They work very largely on the astral plane at the dissipation of glamour, thus bringing illumination to mankind. So what you see in front of you here is that place in the heavens where is found the galactic bulge. In other words, we are looking at the area in the heavens and within our galaxy where the galactic center is found and where thus most of the stars within our galaxy will be seen and thus also, much of the gas you can see here as well. So this gas, this bulge, is symbolic of the way in which we have to deal with the glamours of the astral plane and the illusions of mind, the miles they are found. So this is the area, this is the challenge of the workers that are called the trained observers. And um, so they work thus very much on the astral plane with the dissipation of the glamours. They try to bring light to the situation, to bring light to humanity. And this communication is between the plane, which is the plane of illumination and pure reason, in other words, the buddhic plane, and the plane of illusion and glamour, which is the astral plane. They try to relate that. So they are the mediators between the world of light and the world of illusion. So they will be transmitters of that form of energy which will break up the existing glamours and illusions, dissipate the ancient deceptive thought forms. 
they will release the light and peace which will illumine the astral plane, dispel the illusory nature of its life. Of course, it's at that the sign Scorpio is here found with Libra, interestingly enough, and Sagittarius as those zodiacal constellations here intersect with the galactic plane. We just take a moment to take in the relation of this area in the sky with the work of the trained observers. We then move onwards. And we're moving towards a constellation which is just next by, standing with one foot on the galactic center and the other foot on the heart of the scorpion. Thus standing on the two pathways, the galactic and the ecliptic. Here we find the focus for the group of magnetic healers. These healers have no relation to the work of the magnetic healers of today that work with the vital forces of the etheric body. This group of healers, which we are now talking about, must bring about the right healing of personalities of individuals in all aspects of their nature. And they deal with the, the intelligent transmission of energy to various parts of the nature, mental, emotional, and physical, through the right organization and circulation of force. So these healers should endeavor to break loose from the modern and traditional ideas of healing. And they need to recognize this stupendous fact that healing must eventually be carried forward in groups. And that these will act as intermediaries between the plane of spiritual energy, soul energy or intuitional energy or will energy, and the patient or the group of patients. So a learning for these individuals is that they cannot work as individuals. They need to learn to work as units in a coherent whole. And thus they must strive to bring about healing within themselves at the same time and between themselves and others to work in group formation. And what we see in front of us here in terms of Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer constellation, will be found to be the focal point for this group of magnetic healers. But he must relate the two halves of the serpent, the head and the tail, as part of the healing. And having done so, must join himself together with the constellations next to him, um, including Hercules, the birds, etc. Thus, he will be able to place himself in a greater context and can work safely from a group uh, foundation with other groups as well. This is part of building the celestial ship of the North. 
of which um, a fire kiss becomes a part of that constellation, or should we say, part of the crew of that constellation? An important thing is that these magnetic healers must learn to communicate healing energy from the reservoir of living force to the patients. Okay. Moving then onwards. We need to zoom out a little bit here. We are now moving into the area of the sky, which is the northern polar area of our heavens. And this is uh, the place where the educators of the new age will have its focus. Their service is along the line of culture and they will work to bring in the new type of ed education. Their emphasis will be upon the building of the Antakarana and upon the use of the mind in meditation. And this area of the sky, which kind of surrounds the dragon of the north, the constellation of Draco, this area of the sky is the area where, which can be linked to the teachings of the Buddha, for example, regarding um, the Noble Eightfold Path. And um, this is the place where our uh, planetary North Pole is oriented and is revolving around the North Ecliptic Pole, is, which is found uh, in the constellation of the dragon. So around that dragon, which is coiled upon the North Ecliptic Pole, is the North Celestial Pole revolving and it's revolving with the same cycle as the cross previously spoken of. So this is thus a period of 25,920 years that we're speaking about. And currently we see the North Celestial Pole within the tail of Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, where happens to be the star Polaris, and thus Polaris is our pole star at this time. This will change during the cycle of 25,000 years, of course, and that uh, pole will be moving from Ursa Minor into the constellation of Cepheus, and then onwards onto Cygnus the Swan, then into Lyra, the constellation of Lyra, into Hercules and so on and so forth around the wheel. So right now, when it is conjunct Polaris, that is an indicator of the, uh, should we say, a demarcation between the age of Pisces and Aquarius, you can say. And you can superimpose the zodiacal wheel here and create a polar zodiac if you want to to reflect the movement of the ages of the cross with respect to the ecliptic. Now, this is thus also the area of the educators of the new age. And they, they, they as we said, they work along the line of culture and their emphasis will be upon the building of the Antakrana and upon the use of the mind in meditation. Now, you could say that 
the Noble Eightfold Path is very much about building a foundation as well as beginning to tread that foundation safely across to the other side the other side, which is the spiritual side of the heavens. And the Noble Eightfold Path of the Buddha takes us out of the wheel of samsara, the wheel of reincarnation. It takes us away from pain and suffering thus, in that respect. And in a way, you could say that the work of the educators is analogous to that. Because through knowledge, much pain and suffering can be avoided. So they will act as communicators and transmitters of two aspects of divine energy, knowledge and wisdom. And that's also what, uh, should we say, the three aspects of the noble Eightfold path is um, emphasizing. It emphasizes the right use of the mind through the building of a moral life and having thus established a mind which is pure and right, we have the possibility of entering into a greater understanding of the wisdom which lies behind everything. So they will be a direct intermediary between the higher mind and the lower mind. And they are concerned with the building of the Antakrana. And their task is that of linking the three points of mental focus, the higher mind, the soul, and the lower mind, so that there may be established a group Antakrana between the kingdom of souls and the world of men. Now the world of men is in a way related to those constellations that we've already discussed, beginning with the Southern Cross, the, the, the Centaur, uh, Lupus the Wolf, uh, Scorpio, Firecus, those relate to the three worlds of man. And this group thus tries to relate that world with the world of soul on the other side. And then we come to uh, three groups. The fifth group, the sixth group, and the seventh group the group of political organizers and the workers in the field of religion and the scientific servers. In a sense, you could say that they are establishing the higher arc of that bridge, which the educators are connecting safely with the three worlds of human life. So when we come to the fifth group, which is that of political organizers, they will work in the world of human government, dealing with the problems of civilization and with the relationships existing between nations. The bringing about of international understanding will be their major objective. And you see here in front of you the constellations that are the primary focus for this group. It's uh, Cepheus the king and Cassiopeia the queen. And it's thus easy to understand that this group will communicate the quality of imposition and an authority that is lacking in the other branches of this divine group activity. And this work is largely first-rate work. 
It will embody the method whereby the divine will works out in the consciousness of races and nations. And members of this group will have much first ray energy in their equipment. They will act as channels of communication between the department of the Manu and the race of men. So they will be channels for the will of God, thus. And symbolically, as you can see, Cepheus stands upon the pole star, the pole star in this case, as part of the tail of the little bear, which in this case is part of the tail of the dragon, which fused with the dragon makes this a dragon of wisdom. Now, this is the type of politician that we would like to see someone who has taken their stand within the great wisdom. And is thus able to rule and govern. Now, related to that could also be the uh, constellation of Perseus, the warrior prince. But he plays a role with respect to a few different uh, groups of workers. Notably, he's also involved with the next group, which is that uh, the sixth group of the workers in the field of religion. And that group will have a major focus in the constellations below the king and queen, where is found the princess Andromeda and Pegasus, the winged horse. And you recognize the Pegasus square there found perhaps. And of course, the constellation of Pisces is closely related to this work uh, in the field of religion as well, especially uh, in, the, in the age of Pisces. I, I, I almost said the previous age, but we're still in it, uh, but on the cusp of the new age of Aquarius. The um, atoms within our form nature are one by one being exchanged from a Piscean vibration to an atom of an Aquarian vibration. And thus our bodies are being renewed. And, you know, depending on how much we identify ourselves with the Pisces identity of ourselves, it may feel like we're dying a little bit. And at the same time, we are being born anew as the Aquarian atoms with the new frequencies are appearing within our uh, range. So here, the constellation of Andromeda and Pegasus are related to the workers of the field of religion. Their work is to formulate the universal platform of the new world religion. And may I suggest that that platform is the square of Pegasus that you look at, which is above the head of Andromeda. So she's indicative of that formulation of that platform, which is uh, of the new world religion. And it is a work of loving synthesis and it will emphasize the unity and the fellowship of the spirit. And this group is, in a pronounced sense, a channel for the activity of the second ray of love and wisdom, and that of the world teacher, the Christ. And this platform of the new world religion will be built by many groups. And they will work under the inspiration of the Christ and the influence of the second ray. 
and all these together will constitute the sixth group uh, of workers in the field of religion. We then have the seventh group, and that's the group of the scientific servers. And for that, we need to move a little bit further down, which is symbolical in the sense that these scientific servers work very closely with the form aspect. So we need to look down south in the heavens in order to make the connection to all the many forms that need to be developed and understood in order to reveal the higher purpose through form in service and thus to establish the plan on earth. So, the scientific servers will reveal the essential spirituality of all scientific work, which is motivated by the love of humanity and its welfare. And this relates to science and religion and brings to light the glory of God through the medium of his tangible world and his works. One of the primary constellations here connected is actually the constellation of Cetus, the sea monster, which you see below here. It is in a way symbolical of the whale which swallowed Jonah in the Bible. Jonah is in a sense the soul and the whale is the form nature which swallows the soul to begin with in the early days of our journey upon the mutable cross, where the emphasis is on, on uh, making connection with the form side of things and developing our personality, the third aspect. So Cetus here emphasizes the need to understand the form nature, eventually to free ourselves from its bondage. And this group of scientific workers um, are connecting to, we say, the constellation of Aries, which is above the head of the sea monster, and the constellation of Capricorn, which is on the other side to the right on the screen. They need to stretch all the way through from Aries and the use of the mind as indicated by Aries through all the way through the sculptor constellation at the South Galactic Pole via the, the three birds, should we say, the Petries uh, relating to the lunar realms, the shadow of the solar angels. And they need to work with the microscopium constellation. In other words, they need to work with the details of the form nature. So this group will act as a channel of communication or intermediary between the energies which constitute the forces which construct the forms and fabricate the outer garment of deity and the human spirits. So they will need us to connect form and spirit, symbolically connect Capricorn with Aries, if you will, through the means of Cetus and these other constellations I mentioned. So you could say that these three groups of workers, the political organizers, the fifth group, the field uh, workers in the field of religion, the sixth group, and the scientific servers in the seventh group, they all work 
closely together in order to connect uh, the, the worlds of the worlds of human life and the higher worlds of the cosmic ethers, if you want to call them that. And thus uh, establish a connection to the constellation, or should we say the two constellations of Origa and Perseus, or Atma Buddhi. You can add Aries for Manas if you want to. Thus establishing the Antakarana for man, bridging the lower worlds with the higher worlds, the human or fourth kingdom with the fifth kingdom. We then have the constellation um, of Orion with the two dogs, where Sirius is found in the greater dog and Procyon is found in the lesser dog. Those two stars together with Betelgeuse in the armpit of Orion form a major triangle force, an opening, a gateway. This triangle together with the triangle of the three birds of the swan, the eagle, and the vulture are two opposing triangles that symbolize the higher triad and the lower triad within man between which we have now constructed a big bridge through the means of the groups we have discussed so far, taking us to the eighth group, that of the psychologists. These will form the next group, and they will be concerned with the revelation of the fact of the soul and with the new psychology, which will be based upon the seven ray types and the new esoteric astrology. Their major task will be to relate through approved techniques, the soul and the personality, leading to the revelation of divinity through the medium of humanity. So think about Orion as actually being two triangles that are drawing closer together and eventually forming a six-pointed star. They are the two triangles um, indicated in one place, in one constellation of the two triangles I just mentioned before. But they are here now constellated into one constellation as indicating the success of the work that has been done so far. So here thus in Orion, the hunter, we see a symbol of uh, humanity. Humanity, as an expression of divinity. Because the hunter will eventually turn into the savior. Orion becomes a Christ, a Christly force, savior. Now, this group of psychologists, they will also act as transmitters of illumination between groups of thinkers and as illuminators of group thought. They transmit energy from one thought center to another. And above everything else, they transmit the energy of ideas. Now, this transmission, this movement of energy can be understood if you picture um, the belt of Orion as being an arrow shot from the vantage point of Sirius and the greater dog 
towards the eye of the bull and the Pleiades in the neck of the bull. Now that scene is indicative of this transmission of ideas, of energy from one thought center to another. And the world of ideas is a world of dynamic force centers. Okay, so taking that in, taking us thus to the ninth group. The ninth group, which is the group of financiers and economists. And they will work with the energies and forces which express themselves through the interchange and the values of commerce. And let me thus change our heavens a little bit to reflect the focus of this group, the major focus of this group. So they will express themselves through the interchange and the values of commerce. And they will deal with the law of supply and demand and with the great principle of sharing, whichever governs divine purpose. Now relating to this, we see the great ship Argo before us on the screen here in the heavens. This is the major Focal constellation for this group of uh, workers, of financiers and economists. And those of you who know some of the mythology surrounding this ship and uh, Jason and the Argonauts who went out on his journeys, their, their journeys. Uh, we'll see some of the possibilities relating to the idea of commerce and sharing and bartering and um, the working with the law of supply and demand. Basically, it's the hunt for the golden fleece, which in a very low sense is money, <laughs> but that is a very low uh, concretization and uh, manifestation of the true ideal that must be striven for by the work of this group. They will also be great psychometrical workers. And a psychometrist is one whose soul is sensitive to the soul in others and in all forms of life. So they will have to be able to relate to basically all other constellations uh, in that sense. Because the energy must come to all and the circulation must be real for everyone. The principle of sharing must govern economic relations in the future and it should be seen as a soul quality or energy instead of uh, what it is now viewed in, uh, in relation to money. They will also evoke the soul of the past, linking it with the present and finding it likewise indicative of the future. And in, indeed, this ship can travel both backwards and forwards, symbolically speaking, in a way reflecting the movement upon the wheel of form and the movement upon the wheel of consciousness. This takes us to the tenth group, which is the group of creative workers. 
they are the communicators between the third aspect of divinity, the creative aspect, uh, as it expresses itself through the creative work and in response to the thought world and the first aspect. So they themselves are thus the second aspect. And the major focus for this uh, group of creative workers will be the um, constellation of great synthesis within our solar system, which is that of the Hydra, which you see above the ship Argo on the screen. You can see that this Hydra carries crater the cup or chalice upon his back, as well as the bird, the raven, Corvus, upon his back, indicating a trinity within itself, where the hydra itself plays the first aspect, the chalice the second, and the bird the third aspect. However, as a whole, it is indicative of the great second aspect and the great second ray of love and wisdom, which is governing our whole solar system in this current second solar system of our solar logos. So this is the great synth synthesizing ray of the system, which is thus also able to relate the third aspect with the first aspect in a complete manner. They link and blend life and form creatively. They are closely related to the ninth group, the group relating to the ship Argo. Because today, unknowingly and without any true understanding, they are bringing about a concretization of the energy of desire. In other words, the Hydra, through the means of the star Alphard in the heart of the Hydra, is um, emphasizing the energy of desire at this point in time. This, in its turn, brings about the creation of things. Incidentally, therefore, they are concerned with the concretization of money as well. And their work is also largely philosophical and concerned with the task of relating factually and scientifically the other nine types of groups so that they may work creatively upon the physical plane and the divine plan may clearly appear as a result of this synthesis which they bring about. Now let me just end by saying here that the bird being a representative here of the third aspect is also playing part of the great seventh ray at this time. Uh, much like um, the Mahachoan um, is working through the seventh ray primarily at this time as the seventh ray is the governing ray for the, for the duration of the Aquarian age, replacing the outgoing uh, six ray, which is going into obscuration, at least on some of its uh, lower cycles. Now that seventh ray can be seen in the relation of that bird on the back of the hydra as it is related with the cross below the centaur. That's actually how the seventh ray magician will have to make his stand and relate the highest with the lowest. And thus the wheel is completed and the work of the 10 C groups is completed and the plan of love and light is made manifest upon the earth through the one humanity with the hierarchy.
So those are some of the main thoughts I would like to share with you at this point. So let me open up for your questions or whatever you deem necessary at this point, Alexander. Thank you, Nikos. Um, it's a beautiful celestial journey. And there are a lot for us to process and digest. And I feel that in a certain way today we got another step forward into making those seeds to become seedlings and uh, start growing further and yeah we know libra is the hub of the will and uh, standing in this point of equilibrium relating to all those seed groups it's very beneficial it is very beneficial i think this um somewhat an uh unusual uh, format for our webinars. We went much longer than we usually go. And uh, it was a meditative journey on its own. Uh, I don't know how much time you have, Nicholas, in your disposal. And uh, I would suggest we just have a now a short moment of silence to synthesize all the impressions. And then if you still have time, Nicholas, we can have some questions for those who want to stay a little bit longer and uh, expand this, if you have time for that, Nicholas, and energy. Yes, I'm available, yes. Yeah. So I will, um, just a second. So I suggest we now go into the uh, uh, short reflective silence and I asked Katya if she could just guide us a little bit to synthesize the impressions. So I will unmute Katya. Um, hello, everybody. Hello, Katya. Hi, Nicholas, and uh, thank you. Thank you. So I suggest we get united with energies of light and love and will to good. Align our individual centers. Visualize our group centers as a beam of light with a floating, radiant seven lotuses. Aligned with the centers of the new group of world service. and with the planetary centers. Extending that with the understanding of the centers of our solar system and further on. Visualize a triangle of uh, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. The points that we see as representation of the energy of Christ and Buddha and our synthesis and spirit of peace.
And we see the energy of Libra. Precipitating through those points of distribution. Aiding humanity. And then you group. And people of goodwill working together. Within those ten seed groups, each following their path and doing their part of the work. working together. And we integrate those celestial beings that were mentioned today as a source of energy and inspiration. Visualizing their guiding lights for the workers of the ten seat groups. Now, into the point of the festival week of 2019. And furthermore, 2020. And we connect with the beings that we call Venus, Uranus, and Saturn. and request their aid with precipitation of the energy of Libra onto the planet through the planetary inlets and sixfold progression. And as we see that light being anchored on the planet, we say the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power 
restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh. Now we get united in the heart center of the group and uh, continue our work. Uh, back to you, uh, Alexander. Thank you. Katya, and thank you everyone for staying this um, long in a circle. The recording of this webinar will be available uh, on our website and uh, those who subscribe will receive the link in your mail right away. But if you have some more time, we invite you to stay with us longer and participate in a follow-up conversation. So I encourage you to uh, share your thoughts, your impressions, and maybe questions. Um, Please use for that the function raise your hand uh, on your control panel and we will un unmute you or you can write your um, thoughts in the question section of the control panel. And while there is a pause leading to that and people who are about to leave still with us, I want to uh, invite you for our coming webinar. Uh, it's going to be the day after tomorrow, uh, on September 25th, uh, 6 p.m. GMT. And as you know, each full moon we focus on a different seed group. And under the energy of Libra, we will focus on the seed group of uh, economists and financiers. And uh, Michael Lindfield will share his uh, thoughts on this uh, group and will lead us through the meditative journey internalizing that seeds of the seed group and our coming new moon webinar on october 9th we will focus will continue our journey focusing on the united nations sustainable development goals and on october 9th we will focus on the uh, ninth c group uh, sorry on the sdg9 of industry innovations and infrastructure so please um, join us on the coming webinars um, there, um, Maria Cristina Donadieu says, so beautiful and nourishing, much needed. Thank you so very much, Nicholas. Thank you. Joe said, Joe said, thank you, Nicholas. Profoundly impactful, requiring much pondering and study. Looking forward to the recording. Mm -hmm. Marta asking, is there time? Could you please clarify the two triangles intertwined that energize the service in the uh, new psychology, the group of uh, psychologists? Thank you for your elaboration, you wish. So the question is about those three uh, constellations that overshadowed the eighth group, the group of psychologists. 
Yes, and of course that that group is um, trying to um, relate through approved techniques, soul and personality, as we have been told. And um, in the heavens, we, there are found two triangles known to all observers of the heavens, are known as the winter triangle and the summer triangle, uh, one relating to the three birds and one relating to the two dogs and Orion. And they stand opposed in the heavens, on either side of the heavens, uh, as indicative of the opposites within ourselves, in the sense of the lower triangle of the personality, if you will, and the higher triangle of the spiritual triad, if you will. And these need to be brought together. And that is thus the work of the group of psychologists. And the success of that work can be seen constellated in the constellation of Orion as the two triangles are being brought together in one constellation. And they're aligned. It's not a completed work, let's say, but at least uh, there has been some success in that sense. This is also a reflection of the greater relations of our seven solar systems with the greater constellation of Orion. Let me just add that. So that would be a brief answer of that, Martha. Martha says, thank you. Thank you. I will uh, unmute Christine. Uh, Christine, please unmute yourself. Okay. I can't help but think I'm not supposed to wait a hundred years to begin doing this. And to the last point, how would you transmit that information to today's psychologists? And on the other side, how do I find which group I belong to to connect? Well, that's, that's the, the great work, of course, uh, that we all must go through uh, trying to know ourselves, what is within us, what are the gifts, what are the contributions that we carry within us. Of course, that is about that relation within, as we see our effect perhaps on our surroundings. One approach is also, of course, to use various techniques of seven rays of astrology, etc. And um, simply meditating upon the constellations as we have discussed them today could be one approach to see if there is a certain gravitation in a certain direction, for example. Maybe in our dream world, in our you know, uh, subconscious and more subjective life, there come messages to us, images to us that can uh, communicate such uh, information to us once we have an understanding of the various symbols, of the various energies, of the various constellations. Because if we don't have that um, language in place within ourselves, the soul cannot communicate with us through that language. Um, at least we would not understand uh, so well what was being communicated. So if we build our understanding in terms of these constellations and energies, then the soul has a greater chance of making itself understood as to why we are actually here and what we may contribute um, 
as our primary contribution as part of a group working with a certain aspect of the plan. And of course, a group is related to an ashram, et cetera, et cetera. So that all uh, is related, of course. Uh, the constellations we have primarily focused on today are the constellations that I wanted to bring out that are not so well known to, to the people of the world. What people usually know are the 12 constellations of the zodiac, and that's all well and good. But behind those 12 constellations of the zodiac, these other constellations stand and basically make the zodiacal constellations into what they are at this point in time for us on planet Earth. So, so it is not, I, yeah, yes. well, it is not that we are supposed to find an outer group, but to find an inner um, urging. Uh, I personally do not work well with astrology at this point, but my stronger suit is with the tarot. And mm. it has been very forceful to me in the last week, especially giving me the major arcana cards, which I go, you know, this is important. <laughs> so well, um, the tarot. That's does. why I'm asking. Yeah, if I if I know from that work, then am I supposed to find another group? As you know, and in other words, the the groups that you mentioned. Are they operating now, the seed groups, and how do I find out where they are? Well, that's, that's a very good question, and, and I probably wouldn't be the person to ask about that, but I would say that they are active on the inner planes, and there, primarily, the group is found. Okay. To what, to what extent it has manifested yet and has uh, rooted itself, um, that's another matter. And, and that's probably somewhat uh, different for the different groups. And that relates to uh, astrological trends and rheological cycles as to when these groups uh, will come in on a wave of energy which allows them more easily to form some kind of a vessel or co coherent entity upon the planet Earth. So, you know, there may be seeds on the planet now, uh, groups already available that gravitate and work along the lines of some of these 10 seed groups uh, already and I, I guess it could be part of the work of uh, uh, an organization of people like us to try to identify what those may be. I feel that urging, and I hope the group understands that we are in a very big transition period. Uh, it's like we are floundering here trying to determine our next step. And I personally have been a member of the Theosophical Society for 20 years, but I don't f find, I don't find my root there now. I'm, you know, I'm searching. I, I, I mean, I it's a you, basis. Yes, I, I, yeah, think, go ahead. Yeah, I think you are one among many who experience this same thing that you give voice to here. In other words, the old types of groups are um, dwindling, are uh, being absorbed. Uh, they are like old forms that have uh, run their course. Mm -hmm. And the new, the new ones have not yet sprung forth. So we are in a transitional period between the old and the new. And 
what is in our hearts to really deal with and contribute with may have difficult time finding a forum of expression and sharing um, at this point in time. So I, I think what you say is true for many, that uh, we, we are in a, should we say, Libran transitional period, an interlude between the old and the new, um, very much so. And, and what do you do there? Well, you prepare, you prepare innately, and you work on the higher levels in order to try to work things out. So, of course, what you don't find on the outer planes yourself and would like to see there, okay, maybe it's for you then to try to bring it about, or at least be part of the bringing that about. I, I do appreciate what you have done. I know how much work that is, and uh, you know, I commend you for your per perseverance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I, if I could add that, that was the reason for us to bring this year for the 2025 initiative to work this year on the webinars with people who are identifying themselves with certain groups. So if you listen to the webinar and where you connect with the vibration that comes through those people and uh, their practical work in the field of what we consider to be at least the, some representation of the seed groups acting now, um, then uh, you might see what's resonate, what you resonate with, you know. And um, so, I also wanted to ask uh, Nicholas about one uh, technical thing that kind of uh, wasn't clear to me in the beginning. If I were, it's a quick question. The egg that is you were talking about it, it's within the fish. Or is it like what? What's the position of the egg? Yeah, it's it's one of the fishes. It's one of the fishes, you know. Yeah. As well as the egg. Okay, thank you. Then, then I understood it right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, well, really, thank you, Nicholas, because the expansion of the our map, I think, just you know occurred, and uh, this is an amazing gift. I think for all of us, it's a very unusual and a new approach in addition to the understanding of the 10 seed groups work. I, I really am deeply grateful. And uh, back to back to Sasha. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. Thank you. Yeah, there's several more comments. Um, uh, people expressing great gratitude and saying that there are a lot to process and integrate. Um, Marta asking that you uh, that, uh, you start to make a statement, making a remark about Taro. Uh, if you could uh, recall it, I'm not sure. Are the Taro? Yeah. Oh, I was probably just saying that the, the, the tarot is a combination of, of many of the astrological energies and the rheological energies. Uh, uh, so, so the tarot does contain the truth in that sense. The, and, and there are those who prefer to work with uh, the energies and the symbols in, in that way. So that was the short comment that I was trying to make there, yes. Thank you. Are there any more uh, thoughts uh, to share from the uh, our circle? If you would like to add something, please use this opportunity before we will bring our meditative gathering to 
the, the end. And thank you, Nicholas. It was uh, actually your presentation was like a meditation. And uh, yeah, well, I, I I showed the horoscope first with the Moon in Pisces conjunct Neptune. So uh, you know that's what you got pretty much. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, people uh, sent the. Uh, the gratitude and uh, Robin says the constellation map is great. Uh, yeah, and uh, this celestial journey, that Nicholas, we've been on. Uh, thanks to you, it's been really um, ex expanding, and it's not just this webinar. Uh, for those of you who listen in this uh, I encourage you to uh, go to Nicholas's uh, website Nicholas can you please remind uh, the the link where people can listen uh, the journey that we had a few years ago when on a monthly basis we joined to your webinars and I believe the recordings are still there so those of you who are interested please go and listen to the recordings of Nicholas's presentations yeah, it's the the cosmic order dot com, the cosmic order dot com, and um, you can sign up for a newsletter there, and I, I will inform you if there's anything on the horizon, um, uh, if you want that information. Yeah, we definitely would appreciate if that journey will uh, would continue, and uh, we definitely would be on your crew, Nicholas. Uh, yes, it's just a question of timing, I guess. So, um, thank you. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, the URL address. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I think that's part of the wisdom that we learn uh, through our discipleship is that wisdom of cycles and for finding the right time for the right action. It's part of that wisdom. So we hope uh, that the stars will align soon and we'll be there. And uh, <laughs> we're definitely all together in this journey. And uh, I want to pass love uh, from uh, Michael and Tuya Robinson, who had their uh, webinar in parallel with this webinar. So we definitely all align together. And uh, mm, love to you as well. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. And uh, as we are now at the beginning of the full moon uh, period, we are in the second day of the uh, five days period, and we prepare ourselves for tomorrow's exact time, full moon alignment with the hierarchy. So let's be together in that and be connected. Thank you. Thank you, Anna.